Hey there guys, today I'm going to be going over the mechanics of stealing in Out of the Park Baseball. So there are of course multiple aspects to stealing, from the runner's abilities, their speed and stealing, the catcher's arm, and the pitcher's hold runners. All these factor into how likely the runner is to steal and how likely they are to be successful. Now I'm going to begin by analyzing the runner's abilities, speed and stealing. I did these together rating each speed rating relative to each speed rating and vice versa and as you can see there are relatively linear results where higher stealing and speed leads to more steals and higher stealing leads to uh, higher success rates so as you can see there is a relatively normal increase but there are a couple exceptions to this First, we're going to go to the 40% stealing ability and jump from 60% to 80% speed. So as you can see, there is a 170 steals. This is, by the way, per team per season and 70 caught stealing. But as you increase 20 speed, you drop by about 25 steals and increase by about 10 caught stealing. So I honestly can't think of any cause for this other than AI usage poorly with the higher speed ratings. But ultimately what this comes down to is you can't really trust middle tier speed and there is not much of a difference between somebody with one rating and somebody with a slightly lower or higher one. And in fact, it might be worse. Stealing of course is always better as it gets higher. The runner's speed and stealing ratings do not really affect their value, assuming that you're doing a normal simulation and not manually controlling every game. They can add up to about 1.5 wins per season with the utmost stealing and speed ratings, assuming that they are being handled relatively effectively by your manager. Now, that's obviously much lower than what you can get from an equivalent increase in other skills, but it's not necessarily something that should be tossed off. Speed and stealing barely have an impact at all on your player's overall rating, and they will hardly factor into how hard or easy it is to acquire a player. So I would recommend looking out for players with higher speed and stealing as a potential bargain value. This, I have not thoroughly tested how effect, how much speed and stealing affect what a player is going to ask for in a contract, but I'm pretty sure that you can get them at a good value. Hold runners are the pitcher's ability to control how likely it is for the batter to take off. Of course, higher control runners leads to a lower success rate and fewer attempts. However, since this is such a minimal aspect of the pitcher's game, adding probably at most about half a win a year, it's really not worth acquiring a pitcher for the sole purpose of holding runners. Focus on their pitching ability and then go on to other things. Catcher arms, on the other hand, is extremely important in your defense. The catcher faces every single batter, unlike your pitcher, so it is actually quite important for them to have a good arm, leading to up to four to five additional wins above average for an extremely effective catcher arm. Now, you may remember in an earlier video, I talked a lot about catcher ability and how essential it is to getting top-notch value. Catcher arm is not quite on that level, but it is very near in terms of what it can provide to your team at an affordable price. I cannot stress strongly enough how important it is to have a strong defensive catcher for you. Completely ignore the hitting, get the cheapest possible strong arm and ability catcher you can find, and immediately lock them up to a long-term deal. For those of you doing 2020 live games, Austin Hedges and Christian Vazquez are two excellent examples of this. They start with the Padres and the Red Sox respectively. I would suggest grabbing at least one of them and using them as your starting catcher. Both of them are cheap, not terrible hitters, and offer exceptional defensive value. Overall, speed and stealing are not super big part of the game when you're just playing through seasons, but if you are one of the people who is manually controlling your team, they can make a much bigger impact, particularly your stealing rating. If you look at certain strategies, the hit and run, or I should say run and hit strategy is by far the most effective, allowing you to get extremely successful on the base paths and sometimes steal as many as 300 bases in a single season with an extremely effective stealer. Of course, 
all of the other things I've been saying are completely assuming that you have an average batter. If you have a great batter at getting on base, then of course you're more likely to see an increase in your steal value, as they will have more opportunities to steal. On the other hand, batters who get on base less often are less valuable with their stealing ability as they will have fewer opportunities to use their speed. For those of you wondering how I got these numbers, I did it the same way I did for my catcher ability video. I ran simulation modules of 100,000 games, or in other words, just over 600 seasons, bringing me within 1% accuracy of each of these numbers. I am fairly confident that what I have here is accurately representative of every single rating and that you can rely on this in your simulations. I hope that this video helped you guys improve your teams, both for online and individual leagues, and good luck winning more games.